Howdy. We're Team 7 from the Texas A&M Industrial and Systems Engineering Department. Our team includes Zeng Li, Andrew Lopez, Emily Musembi, and Ling Ling. For our senior design project, our team was allocated a project provided by Sesco, to whom we're truly grateful. Sesco Cement is a privately held company with a 10-acre production and storage facility located in North Houston near Sheldon Lake. This global commodities trading group is a leading provider of one of the most consistent and brightest white cement. It produces white masonry and Portland cement with an annual production capacity of greater than 1 million tons. The company is setting up operation of what happens to be one of the world's largest cement product, Shipyard Terminal. The terminal has two large warehouses, one for production and packaging, which measures 215 feet by 100 feet, and the other for storage of bulk products, which measures 210 feet by 85 feet, though they lack a concrete plan on how to utilize the storage space. The Sesco Group owns a white cement plant that was established to a 150-year-old limestone quarry located in El Minya in Egypt. From this plant, the company performs all its mining and kiln operations, as well as its quality tests on each bugs to ensure utmost service. As of March 2020, it had completed the construction of a new cement terminal in the port of Houston. Sinto, the prime contractor, provided a transportation route from the pro for the product mixture from the ship channel into a series of storage silos through belt conveyors after which the product is transferred to a packaging plant. For the product mixture, Egyptian white limestone from Samalot, popular for its naturally formed white hue, is mixed with carline stone and white sand, both from Egypt. This high quality blend is essential for maintaining low tolerance levels for color consistency. After a brief insight into the company, I will now cover the problem statement for our project. Our task for this project was to offer the sponsor a plan for the use of the warehouse, a plan that will maximize the use of the available warehouse space based on the current design. In a nutshell, this was, would include allocating storage space for packaging materials, finished goods, staging and loading areas, as well as the forklift lanes. Currently, the product is palletized and stored in rows on the production warehouse floor. The product is then loaded onto the trucks using pallet jacks, as will be seen in this video. The process will eventually change to producing the goods during the night and storing them in the storage warehouse for pickup during the day. Now to how we approach this project. Before we discuss the approach that we used to complete the project, it's important to note all of the approaches that we considered originally. The first approach we considered is known as the craft method, which is generally applied when a warehouse may contain multiple departments or storage locations that interact with each other. The second approach is known as the warehouse layout model, in which a warehouse may contain loading areas and inventory and produces an optimal layout of the inventory using a racking system. Our third approach is a variation of this warehouse layout model but instead optimizes this layout without the use of a racking system. After further consideration, we decided that the best approach to apply to our project was the third approach as it maximizes utilization of space the most. In the approach that we implemented, our goals included finding an optimized layout that minimizes travel distance for inventory and maximizes utilization of available space in the warehouse. After collecting the necessary data related to the cement products that would be stored in the warehouse, we were able to develop a mathematical model that ranks the products, calculates expected travel distances, and assigns products to the most optimal pallet locations first. And now I pass it to Ling to discuss the data we received. For the data we received from the sponsor, we received the warehouse initial model, its general outlook, the monthly demand from June to August, Texas cement value from 2017 to 2019, and the type of product that the Cisco facility produced. For the warehouse layout and general outlook data, we used the AutoCAD files to measure the warehouse demand 
and observe the number of storage space. We based on the demand from June to August and Texas demand value to estimate and forecast the future market and observe the trend. For the type of products, there is a total of 14 different brands and each brand can have a different SAP product codes and product type. They all add up to a total of 29 different products. In the forecasting part, we use the three month moving average June to August to multiply the corresponding seasonal factors that we obtain from the 2017 to 2019 demand and the corresponding monthly growth percentage to estimate the future demand. Here is the forecasting data and the graph. As you can see, 2021 will have a significant demand increase. After we chose the approach and completed the forecasting, our team decided to use solid work to create a layout model to show our sponsor. The black areas represent forklift lanes and the green areas represent storage locations and the red area represents fire exit route. Initially, we planned to have a forklift lane between each row as it shows on the left side. That way, forklifts can easily access products in any location. But this layout significantly reduced our inventory. Then we did research on OSHA standards for storing materials in the warehouse and what are commonly used methods in the industries. Then we changed our layout from the left side to the right side. The new layout plan increased our inventory by almost, almost to 70%. Also, each row is limited to one type of product. Now I will present our final deliverable of this project. The area that I just hi highlighted, this table is a representation of our warehouse. We have 76 rows of storage locations and each row is ranked based on their rectilinear distance to all four doors. And this VBA model requires three inputs, the SAP product code, the forecast quantity in bags, and the number of rows to be used. I just input our forecast demand for December 2020. And for this example, we will use 70 as number of rows could be used. First, we click on the sort input button to organize the data in a descending order. Then we click on the generate ranking button to get how many rows are needed for each product. At last, we click the gen generate layout button to get a color-coded warehouse layout plan. Since we used, we used 70 as number of rows to be used. And we can see that we still have six rows left blank. We only assigned rows to popular products that has demand higher than 960 per month and all other products will be made to order. After completing our analysis for the project, we developed our first conclusion that in total, the warehouse can store at most 1,818 pallets within 76 storage rows. Each row contains seven to eight pallet locations that can store at most three pallets stacked high. However, it is important to note that each individual row of pallets will only contain one single product type and that there will be three forklift lanes inside the warehouse. In short, these results produce the previously shown layout model that fulfills our project's goals. In outlining a few of our recommendations to Sesco, our first recommendation suggests that Sesco mainly use forklifts with widths less than 4.5 feet in this very narrow aisle design as an additional safety measure. Our second recommendation is that if future demand is significantly different than our forecasts, we recommend looking into the practicality of orienting some of the rows vertically instead as to allow same type of products to be accessed from two different locations instead. Thank you.